The term tetrarchy from the Greek tetrarchia tetrarchia leadership of four people describes any form of government where power is divided among four individuals but in modern usage usually refers to the system instituted by Roman emperor Diocletian in 293 marking the end of the crisis of the 3rd century and the recovery of the Roman empire this tetrarchy lasted until c 313, when mutually destructive conflict eliminated most of the claimants to power, leaving Constantine in control of the western half of the empire, and Licinius in control of the eastern half. Terminology Although the term, tetrarch, was current in antiquity, it was never used of the imperial college under Diocletian. Instead, the term was used to describe independent portions of a kingdom that were ruled under separate leaders. The Tetrarchy of Judea, established after the death of Herod the Great, is the most famous example of the antique Tetrarchy. The term was understood in the Latin world as well, where Pliny the Elder glossed it as follows, "...each is the equivalent of a kingdom, and also part of one." Regnorum instar singuli et in regna contributor, as used by the ancients, the term describes not only different governments, but also a different system of government from the Diocletianic arrangements. The Judean Tetrarchy was a set of four independent and distinct states, where each tetrarch ruled a quarter of a kingdom as they saw fit. The Diocletianic Tetrarchy was a college led by a single supreme leader. When later authors described the period, this is what they emphasized. Ammianus had Constantius II admonish Julian for disobedience by appealing to the example in submission set by Diocletian's lesser colleagues. Julian himself compared the Diocletianic tetrarchs to a chorus surrounding a leader, speaking in unison under his command. Only Lactantius, a contemporary of Diocletian and a deep ideological opponent of the Diocletianic state, referred to the Tetrarchs as a simple multiplicity of rulers. Much modern scholarship was written without the term. Although Edward Gibbon pioneered the description of the Diocletianic government as a new empire, he never used the term tetrarchy, neither did Theodore Mommsen. It did not appear in the literature until used in 1887 by schoolmaster Hermann Schiller in a two-volume handbook on the Roman Empire Geschichte der Romischen Kaiserzeit, to wit, Die Diocletianische Tetrarchy. Even so, the term did not catch on in the literature until Otto Sieck used it in 1897. <laughs> Creation The first phase, sometimes referred to as the diarchy rule of two", involved the designation of the general Maximian as co-emperor—firstly as Caesar junior emperor in 285, followed by his promotion to Augustus in 286. Diocletian took care of matters in the eastern regions of the empire while Maximian similarly took charge of the western regions. In 293, Diocletian thought that more focus was needed on both civic and military problems, so with Maximian's consent, he expanded the imperial college by appointing two Caesars one responsible to each Augustus—Galerius and Constantius Chlorus. In 305, the senior emperors jointly abdicated and retired, allowing Constantius and Galerius to be elevated in rank to Augustus. They in turn appointed two new Caesars. Severus II in the west under Constantius, and Maximinus in the east under Galerius thereby creating the Second Tetrarchy. <inaudible> Regions and capitals The four tetrarchs based themselves not at Rome but in other cities closer to the frontiers, mainly intended as headquarters for the defense of the empire against bordering rivals notably Sasanian Persia and barbarians mainly Germanic, and an unending sequence of nomadic or displaced tribes from the eastern steppes at the Rhine and Danube. These centers are known as the tetrarchic capitals. Although Rome ceased to be an operational capital, Rome continued to be nominal capital of the entire Roman Empire, not reduced to the status of a province but under its own, unique prefect of the city prefectus urbi, later copied in Constantinople. The four tetrarchic capitals were Nicomedia in northwestern Asia Minor modern Izmit in Turkey, a base for defense against invasion from the Balkans and Persia's Sassanids was the capital of Diocletian, the eastern and most senior Augustus, in the final reorganization by Constantine the Great, in 318, the equivalent of his domain, facing the most redoubtable foreign enemy, Sassanid Persia, became the Praetorian prefecture Orions, the east, the core of later Byzantium. 
Sirmium modern Shreska Mitrovica in the Vojvodina region of modern Serbia, and near Belgrade, on the Danube border was the capital of Galerius, the eastern Caesar, this was to become the Balkans Danube prefecture Illyricum. Mediolanum modern Milan, near the Alps was the capital of Maximian, the western Augustus, his domain became «Italia et Africa», with only a short exterior border. Augusta Trevororum modern Trier, in Germany was the capital of Constantius Chlorus, the western Caesar, near the strategic Rhine border, it had been the capital of Gallic Emperor Tetricus I. This quarter became the prefecture Galliae, Aquileia, a port on the Adriatic coast, and Eboricum modern York, in northern England near the Celtic tribes of modern Scotland and Ireland, were also significant centres for Maximian and Constantius respectively. In terms of regional jurisdiction there was no precise division among the four tetrarchs, and this period did not see the Roman state actually split up into four distinct sub-empires. Each emperor had his zone of influence within the Roman Empire, but little more, mainly high command in a war theatre. Each tetrarch was himself often in the field, while delegating most of the administration to the hierarchic bureaucracy headed by his respective praetorian prefect, each supervising several vicari, the governor's general in charge of another, lasting new administrative level, the civil diocese. For a listing of the provinces, now known as eparchy, within each quarter known as a praetorian prefecture, see Roman province. In the west, the Augustus Maximian controlled the provinces west of the Adriatic Sea and the Sirtis, and within that region his Caesar, Constantius, controlled Gaul and Britain. In the east, the arrangements between the Augustus Diocletian and his Caesar, Galerius, were much more flexible. However, it appears that some contemporary and later writers, such as the Christian author Lactantius, and Sextus Aurelius Victor who wrote about fifty years later and from uncertain sources, misunderstood the Tetrarchic system in this respect, believing it to have involved a stricter division of territories among the four emperors. <laughs> Public image Although power was shared in the Tetrarchic system, the public image of the four emperors in the imperial college was carefully managed to give the appearance of a united empire patrimonium indivism. This was especially important after the numerous civil wars of the 3rd century. The Tetrarchs appeared identical in all official portraits. Coinage dating from the Tetrarchic period depicts every emperor with identical features—only the inscriptions on the coins indicate which one of the four emperors is being shown. The Byzantine sculpture portrait of the four tetrarchs shows the tetrarchs again with identical features and wearing the same military costume. <laughs> <laughs> military successes One of the greatest problems facing emperors in the 3rd century crisis was that they were only ever able to personally command troops on one front at any one time. While Aurelian and Probus were prepared to accompany their armies thousands of miles between war regions, this was not an ideal solution. Furthermore, it was risky for an emperor to delegate power in his absence to a subordinate general, who might win a victory and then be proclaimed as a rival emperor himself by his troops which often happened. All members of the imperial college, on the other hand, were of essentially equal rank, despite two being senior emperors and two being junior, their functions and authorities were also equal. Under the Tetrarchy a number of important military victories were secured. Both the Diarchic and the Tetrarchic system ensured that an emperor was near to every crisis area to personally direct and remain in control of campaigns simultaneously on more than just one front. After suffering a defeat by the Persians in 296, Galerius crushed Narsa in 298—reversing a series of Roman defeats throughout the century capturing members of the imperial household and a substantial amount of booty and gaining a highly favorable peace treaty, which secured peace between the two powers for a generation. Similarly, Constantius defeated the British usurper Electus, Maximian pacified the Gauls, and Diocletian crushed the revolt of Domitianus in Egypt. <laughs> Demise When in 305 the twenty-year term of Diocletian and Maximian ended, both abdicated. Their Caesars, Galerius and Constantius Chlorus, were both raised to the rank of Augustus, and two new Caesars were appointed, Maximinus Caesar to Galerius and Flavius Valerius Severus Caesar to Constantius. These four formed the Second Tetrarchy. However, the system broke down very quickly thereafter. 
When Constantius died in 306, Galerius promoted Severus to Augustus while Constantine, Constantius's son, was proclaimed Augustus by his father's troops. At the same time, Maxentius, the son of Maximian, who also resented being left out of the new arrangements, defeated Severus before forcing him to abdicate and then arranging his murder in 307. Maxentius and Maximian both then declared themselves Augusti. By 308 there were therefore no fewer than four claimants to the rank of Augustus Galerius, Constantine, Maximian and Maxentius, and only one to that of Caesar Maximinus. In 308 Galerius, together with the retired emperor Diocletian and the supposedly retired Maximian, called an imperial «conference» at Carnuntum on the river Danube. The council agreed that Licinius would become Augustus in the west, with Constantine as his Caesar. In the east, Galerius remained Augustus and Maximinus remained his Caesar. Maximian was to retire, and Maxentius was declared an usurper. This agreement proved disastrous. By 308, Maxentius had become de facto ruler of Italy and Africa even without any imperial rank, and neither Constantine nor Maximinus who had both been Caesars since 306 and 305 respectively were prepared to tolerate the promotion of the Augustus Licinius as their superior. After an abortive attempt to placate both Constantine and Maximinus with the meaningless title Filius Augusti, son of the Augustus, essentially an alternative title for Caesar, they both had to be recognized as Augusti in 309. However, four full Augusti all at odds with each other did not bode well for the Tetrarchic system. Between 309 and 313 most of the claimants to the imperial office died or were killed in various civil wars. Constantine forced Maximian's suicide in 310. Galerius died naturally in 311. Maxentius was defeated by Constantine at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge in 312 and subsequently killed. Maximinus committed suicide at Tarsus in 313 after being defeated in battle by Licinius. By 313, therefore, there remained only two emperors, Constantine in the west and Licinius in the east. The Tetrarchic system was at an end, although it took until 324 for Constantine to finally defeat Licinius, reunite the two halves of the Roman Empire and declare himself sole Augustus. Timeline Others. Topic one Tetrarchy until the first of May three hundred five. Topic two Tetrarchy until July three hundred six. After the retirement of the two Augusti, both previous Caesars succeeded them, and two new Caesars were appointed. Maximinus Dia was Galerius's nephew. Topic three. Tetrarchy until the 16th of May 307. After the death of Constantius, his legions proclaim his son Constantine the new Augustus, but Galerius elevates Severus to be the new junior Augustus and compensates Constantine with the rank of Caesar. Topic 4. Tetrarchy from the 18th of November 308 to the beginning of May 311. After the death of Severus, Constantine does not succeed him. At the Council of Carnutum, Diocletian decides that Licinius will be the new Augustus of the West. 5. Tetrarchy from May 311 After the death of Galerius he was succeeded by Maximinus Dia in as Augustus of the East, but is crowded by Licinius, who wants to have the status of the senior Augustus. Maximinus appoints no new Caesar, although it was assumed that this position should later on be filled out with the son of Severus, Flavius Severianus, or at least that he was scheduled for this position. 6. Tetrarchy after 8 October 316 to the end of 316 Shortly before the turn of the year 316–317, Constantine, now Augustus in the West, appointed a Caesar, while Licinius briefly appointed one of his officers, Valerius Valens, as the third Augustus. This was apparent from coins, though Valens was apparently inferior to Licinius, who soon executed him. Even the chronology is unclear, as the date stamping could also be the turn of the year 314–315. 
Topic 7 Tetrarchy from the 1st of March 317 to the 18th of September 324. The Tetrarchic system is at its end. Both Augusti appoint their own sons as co-emperors, restoring a dynastic system. However, before his death, Licinius appoints the general Martinianus on 3 July 324 as Augustus in name only, as Martinianus was intended to replace Constantine in the West. <laughs> Legacy Although the Tetrarchic system as such only lasted until 313 CE, many aspects of it survived. The fourfold regional division of the empire continued in the form of praetorian prefectures, each of which was overseen by a praetorian prefect and subdivided into administrative dioceses, and often reappeared in the title of the military supra-provincial command assigned to a magister militum. The pre-existing notion of consortium imperi, the sharing of imperial power, and the notion that an associate to the throne was the designated successor possibly conflicting with the notion of hereditary claim by birth or adoption, was to reappear repeatedly. The idea of the two halves, the East and the West, re-emerged and eventually resulted in the permanent de facto division into two separate Roman empires after the death of Theodosius I, though it is important to remember that the empire was never formally divided, the emperors of the Eastern and Western halves legally ruling as one imperial college until the fall of Rome's Western Empire left Byzantium, the second Rome, sole direct heir. Other examples. Tetrarchies in the ancient world existed in both Thessaly in northern Greece and Galatia in Central Asia Minor, including Lycaonia as well as among the British Cantiaci. The constellation of Jewish principalities in the Herodian Kingdom of Judea was known as a Tetrarchy, see Tetrarchy Judea. In the novel The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, the Pavensi siblings rule Narnia as a Tetrarchy of two kings and two queens. See also Notitia Dignitatum, a later document from the Imperial Chancery Topic. Notes Topic. Citations Topic. References Barnes, Timothy D. Constantine and Eusebius. Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-674-16531-4. Bowman, Allen The Cambridge Ancient History Vol. 12, The Crisis of Empire, AD 193–337. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-30199-8. Corcoran, Simon The Empire of the Tetrarchs, Imperial Pronouncements and Government AD 284–324. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19815304-X. Kolb, Frank Diocletian und die Erste Tetrarchy. Improvisation oder Experiment in der Organisation Monarchischer Herrschaft, Berlin, de Gruder. ISBN 978-3-11-010934-4 Kuhhoff, Wolfgang Diocletian und die Epoche der Tetrarchie. Das Ramisch Reich zwischen Krisenbualtigung und Neuaufbau 284-313 n. Chr. Frankfurt am Main, Lang. ISBN 3-631-36792-9 Ledbetter, William Lewis Galerius and the Will of Diocletian. London and New York, Routledge. Rees, Roger Diocletian and the Tetrarchy. Edinburgh, UK, Edinburgh University Press. External links A detailed chronology of the Tetrarchy from Diocletian to Constantine A chart showing the Tetrarchy from Diocletian to Constantine